Hello everyone and welcome back to For the Minions, the weekly show where we talk about some of the spiritual successors of the Paragon, hopefully they will be. Uh, this week we have news and updates as always, a little light on the news as usual as it has been for a couple months now, a bit of a dry spell. And then we're going to do, uh, do uh, the poll results, the poll results this time, I did brought back the hype poll. And then we're going to do tech time with Ruba and then we're going to have a little discussion about Genesis, the new, uh, the new console MOBA. And um, I know Joyce and Ader is very excited about that game, so let's uh, let's move right on into it. I am your host, the one and only Mangoose. Joining me, as always, is Mandy Mal. How you doing, Mandy? Tis I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm so excited because we have Joyce and Ader back. You guys know him. You guys love him. But we'll 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 do another little introduction just in case we uh, have maybe some new people. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started with Paragon, your favorite hero, all that good stuff. We have to know. Well, yeah, like you said, my name is Joycenator. Um, I run a YouTube channel and pretend to run a Twitch channel. Um, <laughs> uh, but I, I never use it. But um, <laughs> no, uh, my favorite hero is Decker, um, followed closely by FaZe. Very um, nice. Yeah, so um, big support guy. Um, I got involved in Paragon during early access, um, hit my peak in Monolith, just played the hell out of Monolith, and uh, stopped playing not too long after V42, so I didn't get to play like Drongo or Terra very much, mm. but um, yeah, no, it's uh, it's kind of been been with Paragon pretty much since the, since the beginning. Not quite long yeah. enough to have a Founders back, but... Mm. Right on, dude, and... Uh... Yeah. Big congratulations to Joyce Nader. He just hit 5,000 subs on the YouTube. Very cool stuff. And um, yes. go ahead, go ahead, sub, and head over to his channel. If you're watching this as the premiere, we're going to hold the after party on his channel this time. So Joyce and Nader Gaming on, on the on the YouTube. I'll have it linked in the video description below. And you can come chill out with us and ask any questions that you might have. Let's uh, let's move on to the news and updates. Starting off with Meta Buff. Um, MetaBuff, they're starting to conduct in-house testing of the game, which is great news because once they're actually testing it on their own and, you know, discovering their own bugs, that's a, that's a pretty good indicator that they're pretty close to actually coming out with their alpha. And let's hope that it will be soon because we've all been waiting for that alpha for a very long time and that, uh, that delay kind of kind of killed off some hype a little bit. Um, what do you guys think? Joyce, you go right ahead. Um... Yeah, I mean, so MetaBuff, I'm I'm not going to lie, I've been pretty critical of MetaBuff, but I think this is absolutely like a very positive step. Um, you know, like I've, I've expressed probably more concerns than I've been like publicly positive about Core, um, and I feel like that's kind of misleading as to how I actually feel about them. Um, this, yeah, this is a, a step that makes me super excited um, because like you said, it does mean that they're closer to having a a playable product and something that we can actually see and, and touch, um, at least in a, a metaphorical sense. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really excited to hear that they're in that, that kind of a stage and, and that they're working with like uh, some different assets and, and, and really putting stuff together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of reminded of something that Smokey said um, a while ago about how like at some point you just got to put the alpha out there. It is an alpha there's going to be bugs and, and things like that. So it's really, really cool that they have taken the time to perfect it. And I'm not knocking that in any way, shape or form. But um, I, I like what he said, too, about like, get it out there. Let the public get their hands on it and they can help you um, find the things that need to be tweaked and things like that. So um, I hope that in-house uh, testing, you know, doesn't go too, too long. I'm, I'm happy to hear it's happening because obviously that's one step closer. But um, hopefully we'll, like you said, get our, get our hands on something pretty soon, something a little more tangible. And I know I know they're looking out for their community. They just want to present the best to us. So that's why I appreciate them. That's a, it, kind of to the point of what you were talking about, Joyce and Ader, um, I was also very critical of Core uh, towards the beginning. Um, if you watch like some of the earlier ep episodes of For the Minions, like two, three, four, five, six, something like that, you would think that I was that I hated beta buff. I, I, you know, I never hated beta buff. I always, I was always rooting for him, but I was always a little more critical of them than the other games. I think, uh, I think it's because they're kind of the front runner. They're, 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 they're the big, they're, a, you know, a really big company. They're not the biggest company, but they're a really big company. And it's kind of a little easier to, um, 
to kind of pop their balloon a little bit than some of the others and it's something i have to be wary of myself because i could definitely critique the shit out of core if i wanted to but i'm you know i'm trying to trying to root for them trying to trying to stay positive especially right now with uh with them losing a lot of support um i think you'll see once we get to the poll results or they haven't lost as much support as you may think but uh yeah that's that's all i got to say on that I, I guess oh i i wanted to just uh mention like no we're moving on to <laughs> <laughs> like um kind of like tying in with what what mandy was saying though like um yeah like it's really exciting that they're at this point but also because like like you said like they are one of the bigger companies working on this stuff so like get it out there because like with with predecessor they have a really small team so it takes time to make adjustments you know a, a, a substantial amount of time yeah they got a lot of feedback um, oh, well, why haven't they put anything out yet? Because it takes a lot of time for a team that small to, to make adjustments and fix those things that we notice were wrong. Whereas with, with Core, like they have more resources to dedicate to doing that stuff. So when they get that much information like, like Predecessor has, they can actually do something with that. So yeah. I, I would really like to see, you know, like for me, I think this is a great like springboard, mm. I guess, to like, like yeah, you're, you, you got it almost there, get it out there and then like you have the resources to fix it and and work on whatever needs to be tweaked agreed so. good point good point let's move on to Ameta studios with predecessor um fringe was telling me that he's creating his own assets for the map and you can go back and look at some of fringe fringe's streams if you don't know fringe is their level designer and um smokey kind of weighed in on this a little bit too uh what what he's doing by creating these new assets for the map they're still going to look like legacy like predecessor um Put a video out not long back talking about how uh, predecessors look at least is way more like legacy than, than than core and they're still trying to keep that up but he's just making his own stuff that looks like the legacy map but it's going to be his own design for their map and um a lot of it's stuff that's going to be optimization things like um the the large stairwell in legacy was actually you know several assets stacked on top of each other to make a stairwell uh, what Fringe is doing, he'll just make one large stairwell. That way, it doesn't take as long to be rendered in, and it's not as stressful on a computer. So, that's a uh, and it, and it's things that it's things that are going to make it unique to them since they're not using Epic's assets. Fringe is creating his own assets. That's going to make Predecessor a little more unique, stand out a little better. So that's that's good to hear. That's good news from them. Um, I'm glad I'm glad Fringe pinged me and was like, "Hey man, <laughs> check this out." So. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, Joyce and Air, uh, you, you mainly play on PS4. You don't really play on computer much, right? Um, um, I've been playing more games on PC since I got like a better PC mm -hmm. um, earlier this year. But yeah, I'm still I still play pretty heavily on PS4. Yeah. Yeah. So you got a better PC. I was I was kind of trying to lead into um, you know, if you don't have s such a great PC, then then st steps like this where they're optimizing the assets will really help people out when they're because a lot of people are buying pcs specifically to play these games because the alphas are pc only mm -hmm. right no that's uh, a that's a really good point yeah because yeah. like my my old pc couldn't run paragon in its you know base form so yeah that is yeah. a good point anything yeah. anything that makes that easier on low-end pcs is going to be yeah. great for, for the and game fringe is just a genius so that's like you know he's he's gonna knock it out of the park, so it'll it'll be really really cool. Yeah, Fringe is really good. Uh, drop by his stream and check it out. It's pretty good stuff. I'll link his stream down in the uh, description below. His uh, well, his Twitch, not his stream. <laughs> okay. And also for Omega Studios, uh, Ruba has taken over programming Muriel's kit. Um, Smokey had to go away on a business trip, and so Ruba was able to step in, fill that gap. But usually it was always Smokey doing all the programming, but now that they have Ruba. Um, you know, Smokey can kick back and take a break, and now maybe if Smokey's working on one hero kit, Ru Ruba could be working on the other. So that should increase the, uh, the their productivity quite a bit. So that's really good to hear because Smokey needs a break, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's his yeah, heart. He does. I'm so excited to hear that for both Smokey and for Ruba because, it, like, like you said, it's gonna give um, you know Smokey a chance to ease a little bit of that workload but man he couldn't have picked better hands to to put it in ruba is just phenomenal so it's it's good news for them but it's good news for us as consumers of <laughs> yeah. their of their yeah. uh product because 
yeah, it's going to be top notch. Definitely. Super exciting stuff. Good for Ruba. Uh, yeah. Nice, nice for Smokey, too. Yep. Then moving on to Ethereal, uh, not a lot for Ethereal this week. Um, something they've had in their announcements, and this is not the first time this has come up for them. People make fake Instagram accounts for Ethereal, and uh, they just want you to know what the real Instagram account is. I'll, I'll have it linked in the description below. So that's the one you need to follow if you want to follow Ethereal stuff and look at their beautiful artwork. Um I'm not an Instagram guy. I don't know much about it. I know Joyce and Mandy. Uh, Mandy, I know, is all about the Instagram. So uh, what do you guys think about this? Why would people make fake Instagram count accounts for <laughs> Ethereal? Like, what do they gain from this? Well, I mean, people people on Instagram. So, like, first off with Ethereal, like, all we've really seen as far as, like, tangible stuff is, like, really pretty artwork. Um, and Instagram is a social media platform based around pictures and images. So uh, people steal art on there all the time um, and just like, you know, claim it as their own or like post it as their own. So why not take this developer company <laughs> okay. who has all this gorgeous artwork and just post and be like, hey, check this out. We're, we did this. But like, yeah. yeah, it's it's totally weird to me. Like, I, I think that's an excellent point. Um, and I didn't even think of that until you brought it up. But my first reaction is how weird, like, what do you, <laughs> what do you even gain from that? Like, it, it's just a false sense of like, because if people are liking it and like commenting on it and like, oh, wow, that's so cool. You did such a good job. You didn't do it. So you're like, you're just so, a false sense of like, yeah, I am cool. <laughs> so it's just false val validation is all they're getting. Is, there's no that's, monetization. The, there's no monetary yeah. thing they can get out of it. It's just, it's just, I just clout. So yeah, it's just, just people clown. being dicks. Awesome. It's, it's Pretty literally much. just, yeah, trolling. 100%. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's great. <laughs> that's, that's one way to put it. <laughs> Man, life is so weird. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, people are weird. People are oh, fucking weird. That's man. why I stay the hell away from them. <laughs> Only digital people that I don't actually know. You guys. <laughs> 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 moving on to phoenix rising nothing for phoenix rising um as, as usual they'll, they'll come they'll come out with something one of these days but nothing oh, yeah. yet they got something cooking for sure i just want to remind you guys uh if you want to check out the the social medias for any of these games and learn a little more about them i will have them linked in the video description below but for now let's move on to the poll results for this week's poll i brought back the old hype poll um Somebody suggested during the premiere last week that I do this just to kind of see where everybody stands since I haven't done the hype poll in a while. And uh, it looks a little bit the same as it used to. Um, I'll have to dig in and look and see what the old, the, what the original hype poll was, and I'll, I'll, I'll post that up above. But um, if Core came in at 43%, Predecessor at 9%, Ethereal at 29%, Phoenix Rising at 2%, and all of the above at 17%. Now, the only thing that really stands out to me, um, Core usually maintained around 58 to 62%, and Ethereal usually was neck and neck with Predecessor at around like 9 or 10%, but Ethereal jumped up to almost 30%. They're at 29 right now, so that's a, that's a big leap for Ethereal. I think that has a lot to do with some of the artwork they've released and um, those voice lines, man. Those voice lines really captured a lot of people's attention and got them into Ethereal. Uh, what do you guys think? What do you guys think the, the the bump for Ethereal comes from? Is it a bump for Ethereal or is it a decrease in the numbers for Core? Hmm, that's a good point. Uh, excellent question. I think um, there was this like really small YouTuber you probably haven't heard of him. He's kind of lame that made a video about Ethereal and it got a lot of attention. So I don't know if maybe that had something to do with it. But, uh... <laughs> I'm talking about Manx in case you guys aren't getting the joke. <laughs> But yeah, I think I think your video brought obviously tons of attention to them. So I wonder if that has anything to do with the with the poll numbers jumping up. It could, since the poll is on my channel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good, good point, Mandy. <laughs> Joyce and Ada, what do you think? I mean, yeah, I think it it might have had a little bit to do with a, a dip for core. But I, I think the big thing that stood out for me, I mean, obviously, like people bring attention to your uh, ethereal as they as they release more stuff for us to actually talk about uh but the the voice lines like those are just killer yeah um and and for a game that has been so based around generating attention for visual aesthetics yes. having something other than that 
actually be super kick ass and maybe even better than their visual artwork like i think that means a lot and really grabs people's attention when you have something that's already high quality and then you just kick it up another notch with something completely different mm-hmm. that that's a very good point it, it proves that they are firing on all cylinders it's not just the artwork it's everything that they're going to be doing they're going to be trying to do top notch and compete with triple a studios so yeah, that's an excellent point. Shout out to Tricolor for that amazing. Yeah, I've been sending him, um, like trying to like like telling him like the comments that I got in the video where he was on there and he released a lot of the voice lines. I try and send those to him because it's just really nice things. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure it's nice for him to hear it. Uh, yeah, I bet we're going to see an that. Instagram count for Tricolor now. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, and and like just uh, kind of like doubling down on that um it's really important for people to to see stuff like that like as ethereal puts out more and more stuff i think people are going to just continue to get more excited uh, because we've seen games in the past where they looked gorgeous uh, like no man's sky comes to mind mm. where it looked absolutely gorgeous and it was just a dog shit game <laughs> yeah it was a turn <laughs> i think like, it's gotten better i think it's gotten it better has. <laughs> from what i've heard i, ha- I don't have uh, <laughs> i i solid proof but i haven't been i haven't been able to drag myself back to it <laughs> since I, uh, after I, I played it for like maybe what like two weeks after launch and and i couldn't Oof, that I was couldn't like the anymore. roughest time yeah it was it was pretty bad yeah. but it, i mean it looked gorgeous it was just mm-hmm. not good so like the more stuff they release any of these guys honestly like the more stuff they release that shows that they are good at doing more than just one thing with their game True. <laughs> like making it pretty is is going to be really really beneficial and positive for them yeah 100 that covers it for the poll results now we're going to get into tech time with ruba uh we're going to continue on we've been teaching you guys how to bring assets into the unreal engine and work on them yourself if you want to and this time we're going to be creating blend spaces for uh start animations um trying to get our yin character moving along so uh without further ado let's get in to tech time with ruba okay so we're going to create our own blend space to handle start animation. So if you right click and go to um, animation, and then we have two blend spaces on the right. We have, oh, actually, there's a bunch of different stuff here. Um, we have blend space and we have blend space 1D. Um, blend space 1D lets you control things in one dimension. So, like one number, one axis. Blend space is also known as a blend space 2D. So you can go like up, down, and left and right. So the ones we looked at before were blend space 2D. We're actually going to use a blend space 1D for the next section. So if you want to click on that, and then choose the yin skeleton, and then we're going to call this jog start BS. Oh, no spaces yet. Jog start BS. All right, and I hit return. And like like whatever your naming convention is, I like naming everything like our blend spaces jog start BS. You'll see that these look very similar to the other animation assets. So I like putting like a like like either either start like blend space jog start or jog start BS. Like whatever your naming convention is, just so you know what it is. And then if you double click on it, Mongoose, we will go in and we will see an empty blend space. So at the moment, we uh we don't really have anything in here. We don't have any animations. We don't have um, anything running. So we're going to have to add our own animations. So if you want to expand this window so we can see everything in there, we're missing some stuff. And then if you go at the top, go to window uh, and go to details. Third one. There we go. And I should pop up on the left. Oh, that's there. Um, you want to go back to window? Um, Asset details, maybe. I don't know. I never have to. I never have to open this window. It's always open for me. There we go. That's it. Right. Um, okay. So um, on the left, we have access settings. Um, it's the second option down. So um, if you click the little arrow next to horizontal, this that actually says horizontal axis. So this is where we basically set um, all the directions that we're going. So what we're going to do is we're going to call the name. We're going to call it direction. Uh, where at? Uh, name, so that the first, where it says none, change okay. that to direction. 
Okay. The minimum, so the next box down, we're going to set that to at negative 180. And then maximum, we're going to set to positive 180. That's you. We're going to leave everything else as it is. So that's just the number of points and all that. <clears throat> so now, what this, what this bar at the bottom does, you'll see that we have negative 180 on the left and we have positive 180 on the right. So what we can do is, based on the direction we're moving, we can actually tell the blend space to play a different animation um, based on the direction we're moving. So if we go to filters on the right where it says asset browser, we need to basically pull in some of the animations just like we did before when we were in the animation blueprint itself. So um, if you type start, that should filter down. Okay, so, the, uh, the four that we need are the ones at the top. So if you drag the forward blend, the forward blend space, drag that into the middle point there. Okay. So that now means, and you can, um, you can either drag a little green thing or you can hold shift and that'll move the animation around. But what this means is that if we're going in a direction of zero, we're going to play the forward blend space and zero is like forward um, and unreal. Um, and now we're going to drag the left blend space. We're going to drag that to the, the next line to the left. So you see the lines going down. That's the one there. That's it. So that's negative 90. Um, and again, if you hold shift, you can then see the direction. And then we're going to put right um, on the other one. So that should be plus 90. And then we're going to drag the backwards one. We're going to drag that to both negative 180 and negative, negative 180 and positive 180. Um, so now this now the way this will work is you see her direction changes based on the direction So what we can do is depending on the direction we're moving um, We can basically control the way that we're going to move So if we're going left we want to use the left one if we're going right we want to use the right one So we are done with this mongoose you can hit save and close this bad boy down and we'll move back on to getting this hooked up Okay We're almost there Boop. Okay, so uh, next we're going to go back into, uh, we're going to go up two levels. So we're going to go from blend spaces to animations to yin. And then we're going to go back into the animation blueprint. Right here? Mm hmm There we go. And then we're going to go to the anim... Oh, actually, where are we? Okay, we're in... If you click on ground locomotion at the top, we're already kind of halfway in. Okay. So idle's done. We're now going to go into jog start. So we double click on jog start. So at the moment, it only has a single animation asset hooked up, which is play play um, the jog forward start animation. So regardless of the direction, it's always going to play that. You want to click click that animation and delete it. So just click on the red and blah blah. There we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go find um, in the assets. We're going to go find our new jog start bs there we go and then we're going to drag that out um and just in a similar way it looks similar but you'll notice now that because we set that axis up we now have a direction pin um and what we can do we can do a couple of things so if, if you were like um first thing i would do is hook up the two men sounded odd but yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hook up the two men and then um, this now means that when we move it's going to pull from this blend space instead of just the animation however regardless of what we do now it's still always going to play forward because the direction is, has been set to zero okay um, but what we can do and this is where the event graph so that first thing that came in if you quickly jump into event graph um, on the left under graphs go into event graph uh, double click it now in here if you'll have a look around and this is this is the bit where I'm not sure I've not used the in character blueprint before in here do we have a direction scroll in a bit so I can see I don't know if it's in here this might end up being a three parter um god damn it epic like so no it'll be it'll be further down it'll be in that it'll be in that big long messy chain so here, what we're looking for is we're looking for a thing that says direction. In fact, 
if you go to the left mongoose where you've got the variables down the very bottom left if you scroll that bar down to the bottom god damn it epic okay so the problem that we have at the moment mongoose is that we do not have any way of controlling our direction so uh at the moment we can go in different directions but we don't actually have any way of telling the character how to do that okay so what we'll do because i know this 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 segment this this segment's getting a little bit long is we'll just go and test and make sure that our blend space works and then next time what we can do is we can fix the direction thing um, and we'll also fix the stop direction so we can do stop animations so compile and save uh, this for the time being and then if you go back into the anim graph uh, i will close this one up oh no you're fine you're fine yeah on the left um the graphs go to anim oh, graph yeah my bad no it's fine don't worry i still get lost when i'm going through these and then if you go into the top box for ground locomotion uh, yep one at the top just double click on the ground locomotion state machine uh, the, the 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 black box. There you go. Just double click it. There we go. And we go back into jog start. Double click. Yep. Okay, so this is good to go. It just we don't have any way of telling it direction. So what we're gonna do is in the direction box, if you can type in nine zero ninety. Okay, and then hit compile and save. Okay, and then close the window. And then, okay, hit play. Now, don't, but hit play, but don't move. Okay. And you can make your window a little bit bigger if you want to do it. Okay, now, so, the way that we know this is going to work is when you start moving, your legs are going to look strange. Okay. And I think that if you move to the right, it should look normal. So maybe to try and move to the right. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's do it. It's either going to look right or it's going to be backwards. Uh, it's not letting me move. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh. So do you see? Do you see there? <laughs> <laughs> okay. She she started so, to. So it it works, right? But it looks <laughs> awful, right? And the reason is that before she was always running forward, right? And and now she's always running to the right. <laughs> so no matter what direction you start running you're always going right. Um, however, that is like what we wanted. We, we, we set it to 90 instead of zero. So that's to the right. Um, so your yin now, when she starts running, she starts running to the right. So um, yeah, uh, that's kind of what we wanted. Um, but I'm gonna suggest next time Mongoose, what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll fix this so that she can run in the right direction and um, we'll also look at setting up our stop direction as well so that um, we can do that. We'll do that next time if that sounds good. Sounds good to me, dude. All right, see you guys uh, and see you, Mongoose, next time. All right, see you next week. I hope you guys enjoyed Tech Time. I hope you learned a little bit. If anything, you learned that Ruba knows what the fuck he's doing. But uh, we're going to move on now to the topic for discussion. And this week's topic for discussion, we're going to stray away from our normal games and talk a little bit a bit about Genesis because, you know, the Paragon fan base was largely PS4 based. And Genesis is a MOBA for PS4. So, uh, Joyce and Edder, you know a lot more about Genesis than I do. So, uh, why, don't you, uh, why don't you lead us off here? Yeah, so Genesis is uh, a little different from most of the games we're talking about, so I don't think it's going to be like necessarily competing with all the same player base, but it mm -hmm. will be live uh, July 18th, so we're going to be able to play it a little sooner too. Um, so uh, I've been talking with uh, like their Discord mods and, and uh, game testers uh, pretty much like all day. I'm uh, trying to learn a little bit more about it. I've been watching a lot of gameplay. Um, so uh, they mentioned that uh, they are going to have both PVE and PVP. Um, so oh, really? For people who, yeah, yeah, they're doing they're doing both. Um, from what I understand, I, um, a lot of the gameplay that I've been watching doesn't have any like um, commentary with it. It's just you're just watching people play the game for 20 to 20 minutes to an hour <laughs> at a think, time i think i've been watching the same stuff that you have then yeah 
Yeah, but I mean, it, the the gameplay looks really clean though. Um, last hitting uh, seems like they have like a, a little feature in there that might make it easier for new players to learn how to last hit, which I think is really important because mm -hmm. a lot of people on PS4 don't play MOBAs. Um, yeah, let's see. What else? What else did they mention? Because I, I asked them for um, for some clarification on on a lot of questions that I, I found people had like common questions. Um, as of right now, there is no mouse and keyboard input, so it's all controllers. Um, so even though there's going to be crossplay between PC and PS4, um, PC players won't have like that speed and accuracy advantage of having a mouse and a keyboard. Um, mm -hmm. But they're I mean they're still considering adding con uh, keyboard support. Um, but as of right now, it's strictly controller, which I think is a really interesting and yeah. notable um, spin. With mm -hmm. the isometric top downs, I don't think it'll matter nearly as much as it did with Paragon, though, with a third person right. MOBA. Um, so I mean, I, I I would be more comfortable playing with a with a controller, I think, than than a mouse and keyboard. I've been playing the dog shit out of Enter the Gungeon to the point that my hand hurts. So, <laughs> for playing it on the keyboard, so I need to switch over to a to a damn controller for that. That's a little off topic, but yet, yeah, yeah. like you said, it looks clean. It looks very good. Uh, and and it is top down. So I mean, it's it's pretty different from Paragon and and you know the games that we normally cover and uh, that you guys mm -hmm. normally expose and, and like talk about. Um, they did say that they plan on having a ranked mode release roughly a week after their normal launch. Um, so if you want to get sweaty, you can get sweaty. Um, <laughs> right on. Just... A week yeah, after their normal launch. That's what yeah, I heard. that's that's what they're saying is that that's their plan right now. How many um, heroes do they have? I didn't ask, um, yeah. but I, when I was watching gameplay, I saw uh, some of the selection screens, and it, it it looked like they got a a fair amount for a launch. Hmm. Um, that you know, uh, obviously they they want to have like several characters ready to go for each role. Um, and it, it looks like it they now. have that. Um, you Googling it? Yeah. Uh, they said that there are going to be um, cosmetic items that you can lock, uh, unlock exclusively in-game through achievements as, like, reward skins and stuff. Oh, I cool. like uh, it. Yeah, that has me really excited. Because, yeah. like, obviously, like, with a MOBA, um, it's kind of hard to make it pay to win. But having having skins that you can pay for and just have cool skins is nice, but then having skins like, like in Paragon, like the mastery skins. That you earned, right? Yeah, because you, you had to earn those and that mm -hmm. made them so much more special. special. Absolutely, I agree. Um, they do have a feature um, that I think is, is really cool. Smite has it, and I, I think Paragon had it, but I, I don't know, because if, if Paragon had it, I had it turned off pretty early on because I, I kind of knew what I was doing. Uh, but it's uh, like an auto leveling uh, feature. So if you have it turned on, it automatically levels up different abilities for you as you progress th through the game. Okay, that's really cool. For, I think that's a really good strategy for, like you said, for console players because they they may be new to, right. to MOBAs. Very cool. What's um, a 26? 26. 26. Wow. Yeah, that's quite a few, quite a few. That that Yeah, that's, what, five per roll plus one? Yeah. That's what I was wondering. I wonder where that plus one is going. Well, yeah, I mean, you got to think some of them can play more than one role, though. Oh, uh, yeah. absolutely. That's true. You know. Yeah, true, true, true. Um, no. Oh, go ahead. I had been thinking before about getting a, um, a PS4 just to, just to try this game out. However, after watching it a little bit, it does look like it's just a standard isometric top-down. And, like, I think I could probably get the same experience playing LOL or Dota. So I don't think I will get a PS4 just to play this. When it does come out on PC, on PC, I will, I will definitely uh, try it out. If only just to play a MOBA with my old PS4 pals from uh, from Paragon. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was just gonna say it sounds like their PC launch is planned to be shortly after the PS4 release. So it's not like you should. It sounds like you won't have to wait too long. And then they do plan to extend it to Xbox and Twit and uh, Switch. Oh, I think that's oh, nice. an awesome Switch yeah. game. I love to hear that. That's really cool. And then one last thing I wanted to touch on 
with this um, as far as, because you mentioned um, it looks pretty like a pretty standard isometric top-down, which it, I agree, it kind of does look like that. Uh, but there is a wrinkle in here that I think is really interesting. You don't have to return to base to buy items. I noticed that when I was watching the footage, I was like, it doesn't look like they're having to return the base at all unless they need to heal up. Like, they're buying the items in the field. I, I like that. Like, that kind of needed to be done away with anyway, I think. Yeah, they, they said their reasoning for that was they feel it speeds up gameplay and uh, increases the pacing of the game. Mm. Very cool. Yeah, I like it. You know what's funny is I have done next to no research on Genesis because I was just like, yep, I'm playing that. Like, it was like, <laughs> I don't need to, I don't need to. Like, when I first saw that it was, um, when I heard it was a MOBA for PS4, I'm like, I'm absolutely playing that. And then whenever I found out it was a third person, I was a little bit like, eh, but I'm still like, I'm I'm playing that, 100% I'm playing that. So, it, I, I'm, I've am i learned a lot uh, from all your research, Joyce. I appreciate that because I was like, I did nothing. I was like, I don't need to research it. I'm playing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much the only thing I did was watch a bunch of videos, like you said, that didn't really have any commentary explaining anything. But, yeah. Um, I wanted to at least know a little bit about it. But um, yeah, good good deal, dude. Way to get Heck in yeah. there and do, do the research, do your homework. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure I can get us a uh, like a. I'm, I'm gonna double check, but I'm pretty sure I can get us a um, like an invite link for their Discord server too, if anyone wants to oh, check nice. that out. All their mods have been super, super chill to me. Their testers are super friendly. Um, they're very helpful. They they respond really quickly to, to questions and, and are very interactive. Um, if you if you need to learn anything from them too, so wow, uh, good really to know. really nice people over there too. Very cool. Very cool. Like uh, I'm, I'm looking at looking at the website right now, and this girl with uh, tonfas or billy clubs or whatever. Like I want to play that already. Like, <laughs> right? It's like yeah, a Talim to... from uh, Soul Calibur. I love those weapons. Ooh, yeah. I need to do my research and find out who my main's gonna be. <laughs> I don't see anybody with a bow yet, but I'm sure it's gonna be in there. Oh, there has to be. I <laughs> mean, see. is it even a MOBA if there's not a bow kit going? Archer really? it looks like it's gonna be Apollo. Yep, ooh, that guy's got a bow. Ooh. Nice. <laughs> take it. I'll take it. <laughs> There's always somebody with a bow. A <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people, uh, that's, that's one of the criticisms I see about Ethereals. People say their the names don't match the heroes. I think once you get into the lore, they match up a little a little better, but that seems like a weird criticism to me, too. Yeah, yeah. I don't really... <laughs> I mean, a lot of weird shit going on with Ethereal. People making fake Instagram accounts. Yeah, right. Poor <laughs> Ethereal. Leave Ethereal alone. <laughs> <laughs> yep. right. Is that uh, is that a, is that everything everybody wants to say about uh, Genesis? I think so. I, yeah, I think so. I think that about covers it. Oh, right on. I'm just really excited to play play a mobile on console. I know, uh, right? Not That's smite. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's not smite. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right, I, I agree with you there. I agree with you there, and I'm excited. Like I said, I'm excited to get back in and be able to play with some of my old PS4 pals that never moved to the uh, to the PC master race. So good stuff all around. So that's going to close it out for our topic for discussion and bring us around to plugs, or perhaps I'll edit this out if we can't do it. We might have a special segment where we get a uh, Mandy's sister to try and identify some paragon heroes if you don't know Mandy's sister never has never played paragon doesn't play games at all so it should be fun to see if she can match the hero with her name <laughs> and, uh, i hope i hope she agrees to do it she was a little iffy on this she doesn't want people to laugh at her i told her i'm not gonna be laughing at you we're gonna be laughing with you so. yeah <laughs> yep it's gonna be a good time if we can get her to do it <laughs> All right, guys, so we have Mandy's sister, Dara. You know her as Dara, not Gamey. You see her in the comments quite a bit. She's a lot of fun, and she's volunteered to come in and do this. She has never played Paragon. She doesn't play games at all. That's why her name is Dara, not Gamey. And, uh, but we thought it would be fun to see if she could match the names of Paragon heroes and the abilities of Paragon heroes with their portrait. So we're going to have her do that now, and it should be, and, and I'll let her know, you know, what she got right and what she got wrong. So, Dara, go ahead, and you can just move the uh, the names to wherever you want them and the abilities to wherever you want them. Severog. I feel like this is a fella. I don't fucking know who any of these people are. Am I just doing these three? 
Okay, I'm needing to just move it. Okay, Severov, Sever, Sever, maybe like, maybe like he's got a knife, so Severov. Riplash, Feel, <sighs> Bolt, Bulwark, Zipon. <laughs> so, oh, did you, were you able to see that move, Goose? Uh, I wasn't able to see it on the screen that I was trying, so I switched it over to um, Discord so I can see it now. Okay, so, so but it's working out. Okay, Richter, Richter, um, Siphon. Oh, well, Siphon sounds like when you siphon something, so that's probably an ability. This guy looks like he's like a devil. Looks like he practices the dark art, so I'm gonna... <laughs> Let's see here. Hashtag Theo Vaughn fans know what I just said. Okay. <laughs> Rip, Rip Lash. That sounds... And he looks like he's got like a chainsaw. Whippy do thing. I'm gonna say ability for that. Bolt, steel. Well, steel, it's... That's not how you spell the chainsaw, but there's steel chainsaws, so maybe that's his name and he Rip Lashes you. Bulwark, well that leaves Bulwark and maybe maybe he does a Ricketer. Okay, I think I got it. I think I aced it. <laughs> you actually did pretty good. You, you did. did really? No! You did. No! Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> let me, uh, let me pull it. Well, I can't really uh, pull it up. But uh, you got Severog and Siphon correct. So you match those two oh. both. You got Riplash correct. However, Richter goes. Um, Mandy, can you can you move Richter to where Richter goes and steal where it goes and Bulwark where it goes? Sure. So uh, it was you. You got fifty percent. That's that's way better than I thought you were going to do. I like the way you reasoned through it. Because, like, Riplash, yeah, he does look like he could Riplash something. And Severog Sever and Siphon, you match that up perfect. And your reasoning was sound. Very yeah. well done, Dara. Sweet. I didn't think you were going to get any of them right, but, yeah, you got a... Yeah, you, this kind of backfired on us. We thought it was going to be... Ah, <laughs> uh, no. It was perfect. I'm so proud of you, Dara. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Tear me down and build me up. Okay. <laughs> What is that now? Do I do it again? Nope, that's that should be it. Uh, that's going to bring us around to plugs. Mandy, what do you got to plug? Um, I've been horrible and I have not uploaded to YouTube because I'm a terrible YouTuber, but I'm a kind of okay streamer. It's, like, it's all Twitch now for you. It's all Twitch now. <laughs> it's just so much fun. I'm having so much fun. It's really hard for me to pull myself away from it. And it's a lot of work, so that's why it's kind of consumed. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know, it's a lot of work to make, um, a YouTube video with editing and stuff like that, but it's also a lot of work to go live. So, you know, it's kind of, it's just so much fun. So just come hang out just once. You'll like it. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's kind of actually not to diverge too much from plugs, but that's kind of why I switched from traditional YouTubing to streaming too. Mm -hmm. Um, cause they're both a ton of work. They both take a lot of time, but I, I really liked being able to like hang out and interact with people and, and connect with my viewers because like absolutely you get to do that so much easier streaming than you do in in a comment section um it's but... literally oh, oh sorry i was no, just gonna no, say no, it's literally the um to me anyways the main reason to stream is the interaction like i can play video games by myself that's fine <laughs> like but to be able to talk with people and like share something funny when something funny happens in game oh my it's just the best time i love it and i love the community that i am building and i just i'm having a good time so yeah and like for me you know i, I play a lot of competitive games so I, it's going to take me hours to grind for clips for a video anyway and then i have to edit it so i might as well share that experience and let people mm -hmm. see what it's like trying to get there yeah um, definitely but speaking of streaming, we're going to have the after party on my channel afterwards. Um, so if you guys want to check that out, um, like we mentioned at the start of the stream, I just hit 5K. So I'm doing a big giveaway, giving away like about $100 worth of stuff tonight. Uh, so it's going to be going to be really exciting. Come on, hop in there and uh, see if you can see if you can win something. Yay. That's all I got. The plug was uh, go <laughs> join us on Joyce and Andrew's channel. Hang out. Heck yeah. It's going to be such a good time. We'll have to 
we'll have to see if there's something we can all three play together. Yeah. There's gotta, yeah. There's gotta be some little something or other. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. There's gotta be something. <laughs> All right, that's going to that's gonna close it out for For the Minions this week. Thank you all for coming out to join us. Joining us, and if you're on the premiere, like we just said, come join us at the after party. If not, you know, uh, you missed it. Sorry. <laughs> maybe, maybe Joyce will post it as a, as a video or something. But uh, that's going to be it for now. Thanks for hanging out with us for the entire For the Minions crew. Goodbye. Bye. Mangoo!